Hi, Coco here in the Metro, and in this next segment, we're going to be exposing the ugly reality of human trafficking and introduce somebody who is really passionate about doing something about it. In studio with me, Rashonda Autry Payne, and she is the founder and executive director of Fanny's House. So welcome to uh, the studio here, and uh, we're going to be sharing your story on Fanny's House and how you are... Um, Really a blessing to so many people. Um, First of all, so that we're on the same page, tell everyone what human trafficking is. Human trafficking is basically the modern day slavery. It is when someone is sold or forced to perform sex acts that benefit somebody else or it's labor. But mainly human trafficking is about the sex trafficking part of it. Okay. That's what I'm seeing in South Carolina. Wow. And it's something that you would normally think, okay, well, that's not in our neighborhood. But this is right here in our state now. Absolutely. And and that's important that people know that. Mm -hmm. That we're not talking about um, someone from a foreign country. Mm -hmm. We're talking about South Carolinians. We're talking about other American states. This is a national problem, our problem. From state to state, our problem, we have a problem with human trafficking, and that needs to be expressed. How did it get to uh, the Midlands and and South Carolina in general? What is attracting these traffickers? The first thing that's attracting them is the lack of law enforcement stepping in. That's attracting them. Um, and then we're right in between Atlanta and Charlotte, two major cities. Mm-hmm. And so so they come right through South Carolina. It's been times when they've come through South Carolina to sell a child to a trafficker in South Carolina. Mm-hmm. They, they feel comfortable with that. We're right off 95. We're, we're 20, 77. All these highways that, that people travel, these people are traveling these highways selling women and children. Wow. What are the age? What's the attraction? What's the age range? Um. When I first started this in 2014, it was, I saw mainly 15 and 16 year olds. Here, now, 2017, as recently as two months ago, I was looking for a 10 year old. Oh my. A 10 year old baby. Oh my goodness. What is it that attracted you to trying to get involved? I was a guardian ad litem with, in the court. Do um, you know what a guardian ad litem is? Yes. Okay, okay. It's um, a child protector. It, it is. Yes. <laughs> and um, But for those who might not know, okay. explain to them. <laughs> a guardian ad litem is a court-appointed um, guardian for children in DSS custody. Okay. Who might have been physically abused or, or neglected or something. And what I, what I found was I had a couple of cases, 15-year-olds, 14, 15, and 16-year-olds, and I saw them being groomed. They were being groomed. Um, and that's what made me really jump into human trafficking, trying to figure it out and find out what I could do and um, what was needed and everything. Um, because they, they preyed on these children, and I, I had no idea mm-hmm. what, I was, what I was really seeing until I started to, to, to ask questions. And, and when I started to ask questions, I was able to take it to DSS, to the foster parents, to let them know to watch out for this. Okay. And... Um, there was an incident where one of my garden at Lightham children was in an adult club. She was being sold in an adult club here in Columbia. Wow. So, um, but I was able to get in contact after a lot of running around. I was able to get in contact with an officer who took that child, 15, at a, at 15 years old at the time, mm-hmm. took her out of that club. And the officer called me and she said, what is she on? I said, I have no idea. Come to find out she was on every type of drug you could think of. Oh, my Molly, um, Oxy, uh, she just had a little bit of everything. 15 years old. Doesn't make sense at all. How can people protect themselves from human trafficking? Be aware of your surroundings. Okay. Um, I like this. I like to tell people this cause maybe they can relate. I'm 43. And when I was a child, my, my, my mother and my father would say, if a car pulls up beside you, run run right so in my little mind the monster was the person in the car pulling up beside me you know trying to talk that stranger danger Mm -hmm. now people don't have that they don't they these 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 children don't have the warning or the knowledge they need to be aware of these things to be aware that not everybody is good 
not everybody is your friend. Mm -hmm. When you find a 15, 16 year old child with a thousand friends on social media, adults should know right there something's not right. Okay. Okay. So educating ourselves is the only way we're going to be able to prevent this and fight this and really make make some strides Mm -hmm. in ending human trafficking in South Carolina. Right. We have to get together and do this because they've raged war on young women and children. That's not okay. Mm -mm. And this time of year, I understand, is worse than any other. Um, Tell us why. Because the children are getting ready to come out of school. And parents have to work. That's just the reality of it. Parents have to work. Um, So these children are going to be at home, friends' houses, wherever, if they have a license riding around. Here's the the bad side to that. Every single thing they do, they're going to put it on social media. Mm. Not even knowing that the person looking at their social media and liking their pictures is potentially a trafficker. Okay. Wanting to do harm to them. Mm-hmm. So we have to open our eyes and stop saying that these children are too young to understand what that means. No. These children are not too young to understand when they're in danger. And right now they're in danger. Right. We have to teach them about to be aware of their surroundings. A lot of times I see even grown women just walking around or texting or something, not thinking, not looking, not being aware. Mm-hmm. That's a dangerous time. Okay. So being aware. Absolutely. And parents um, monitoring social media. Absolutely. Teaching your children yes. to not be so um, open. open. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We. This is a discussion that, that is a must. We have to have this discussion. Mm-hmm. Because what, what we might not want to say to a child, somebody else out there is saying to that child. Right. So it's better when it comes from from loving, educated adults than from somebody who wants to twist things around and mold this child into what they want to do with this child. Okay. And that's what's happening. All right. I, I hate to say it like that, but that's just that's the truth it. of okay. it. Now, you are the founder of Fanny's House. Yes. Tell us what you do at Fanny's House. What we do is uh, street outreach, rescues, um, emergency transportation. If, let's say we have, I've had moms with their small kids that were being trafficked. And and, and so when they call me, I can help them and and get them to safety. Um, If need be, we can put them up in a room for a couple of days. Um, Just anything to get them out of that situation. Mm -hmm. Minors, we we get them reunited with family. If no family, then I have to call law enforcement to pick them up. But if they're over 18, I can take them with me. I can make sure that they are, um, that they get the services they need Mm -hmm. through referrals and, um, and community actions. And you have a partnership with the National Human Trafficking Resource Center. Tell us about that. Yes. That is, it's an 800 number that victims can call from any state. It's, it's national. And they can call that number. And what they do is the National Human Trafficking Resource Hotline is called now. Okay. What they do, they're like a clearinghouse. So let's say a victim from South Carolina calls. What they'll do is contact me or, or somebody else in South Carolina. You know, if it's somebody else in South Carolina, they'll contact them. Um, when they contact me, I get the address and as much information as I can about the victim, and then I start communicating with the victim. So first they're on the line with me and the victim, and then they transfer it to me and the victim, and they step out of it. Um, that's a wonderful thing because they, they can get the word to states. So, so they can get the word out further than I can. Mm-hmm. But when they get somebody in South Carolina, they would call me. And that, that's a wonderful thing. Wow. All right. Again, Rashonda Autry Payne, founder, executive director of Fanny's House. Yes. And how can people be part of the solution? In many ways, many ways. This is going to take an army. Mm-hmm. It really is. We need people to be out in the community. We need people watching. We need people educating themselves on human trafficking. Okay. And that's okay. It's okay to say sex trafficking, labor trafficking, human trafficking. That's okay. But what, what people need to do is start talking, start having the conversations. If, if, if you have questions, give me a call. I'll, I'll answer any question I can, but we need to be informed. Right, right. And to give your social media contact information. Okay. Um, Facebook is Fanny's House. Uh, Twitter is Fanny's underscore house. And... Our 888 number is 888-294-4508 to reach me. Okay. And they can also get more information on your website, too. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the website is www.fannyshouse.com. 
fannyshouse.org. All right. I wish we had more time. I may have so many questions, but you're going to have to come back on again. Thank and you. thank you so much for enlightening us and um, helping us to understand what's going on right here in our neighborhood. Thank you, Rashonda. Thank you.